life with father. My father, unlike Teleshi men and his hard-working wives and children, was not a working person. He felt that work was only for women and children. He was a dictator, and no one in our home dared to question him. His relationship with the family was like the relationship of a master to his slaves. If he raised his voice, we all had to stand at attention. His best moments were when he had money in his pocket and could go to the bazaar or market to spend time with other men like himself. He spent most of his time in tea houses with other men and spent our family's money in the lotto. He did not disguise his dislike for the feudal class, which earned him respect among his peers. He was also notorious for his fearsome reputation, and even his closest friends were very careful in his company. They knew he could easily turn on them with one wrong word. He loved to have friends, but his nature prevented him from maintaining any good and lasting relationships. Without warning, he could become extremely violent toward any who spoke against him, and it was equally strange and surprising to see him become gentle when someone praised him. He loved to be praised, but was not able to ever tolerate any criticism or opposition. This dualistic personality made him an easy and predictable target for those ready to take advantage of him. The cleverest deceivers were able to empty my father's pocket with the slightest praise. My father's pride ruled him, but it also eventually ruined him. His life was a continual failure because of his confused and complicated mind. With no talent for making money and unable to save, my father lived one day at a time, too busy to be concerned about his and his family's future. He considered manual labor a disgrace and quickly squandered the money his family earned working on other farms. My grandfather and his brothers were rich and prestigious people among the community. My father received a healthy inheritance after the death of my grandfather, but spent it all in a very short time. All that remained was shallow and superficial family prestige. The village community treated my father as an elder because of the legacy that his family left him. My father, however, did not possess the values of prevalent Teleshi-style eldership, nor did he desire them. My father believed that an elder of the community should not work. Working for others reduces the authority of eldership, he believed. A boss must always be a boss. These were not the attitudes of all Teleshi men. Most Teleshi people were hard-working farmers, and for the sake of their families, they preferred helping their families to any kind of eldership. For this reason, they struggled through long days and long nights. My father's hobbies were chickens and an orchard. He loved to have every kind of chicken in the yard which could be costly whenever diseases were introduced into the yard by other chickens. He also collected all kinds of fruit plants from everywhere and planted them in our orchard. But he was only a collector, leaving the care of the chickens in the orchard to the family. If we lost a chicken to a fox or a jackal or a plant was broken by an animal, then it was woe to the family. His graceless attitudes caused us to take refuge in lying sometimes and rescue ourselves from his attacks. One day, on a school holiday, we three brothers were asked to look after the house and watch our birds. We lost several of our ducks to a fox that day. We knew that our father would punish us harshly. We were trying to find a way to escape his punishment. Our plan worked. I was instructed by my older brother to take the blame and sit by the main road a hundred yards far from our house. I was to cry hard as soon as I saw our father coming from the bazaar. My cry, we thought, may scare him and soften his heart toward us. Our middle brother took the responsibility to hide outside the house and watch our father's reaction and report it to the older brother. If he was furious, then my brothers could run away and hide. Long story short, I saw my father coming from a mile away. I started to cry naturally because of my fear. When father got closer to me, I sobbed so hard I almost fainted. This scared my father to death, thinking that something really horrible may have happened to the family. He was nervous and continually asked what happened, but I could not speak clearly because of my sobbing. Eventually, I was able to inform him that a fox had left a few of our ducks dead in the orchard and taken others. He sighed a breath of relief when he heard this and said something unbelievable. For the death of a few birds you were terrified and terrifying me? I don't care about them. He then lifted me up from the dust and walked me to the house. When the middle brother saw him, he also started to cry. Then my father left to calm him down. 
As he was talking to my middle brother, I rushed home and gave the good news to the older brothers that our father was not angry. The older brother also started to cry when he saw father. His words to the older brother were nice also. We were happy to escape his punishment that day. We kept that day a secret until our father's death. After that, it became a source of laughter in the family. My father was not religious, nor was he against religion, but he did not like religious clerics or mullahs. He believed they talked about moral standards that they themselves were unable to follow. Unlike many Teleshis, he did not like the ruling king because the middle class and poor were unable to stand for their rights against the rich. He was openly critical of the mullahs because mullahs were not in power at that time, but he refrained from openly criticizing the king for fear of endangering his own life. My father had his own ideas. According to my father, women needed no education, and he did not like the idea of freedom for women, a belief which placed him in direct opposition to the king of Iran. Though he was a dictator to us, and especially to his wives, he also knew that a wife could take her husband to a court for his unjust treatments. For this reason, we sometimes saw fear in his face when he was harsh. Strangely, my father would never tolerate even the slightest injustice toward his family from others, all the while inflicting extremely harsh treatment on us. And true to his bizarre inconsistencies and erratic behavior, my father was still always very generous to the needy.